As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. This quote by Henry Hill at the beginning of Goodfellas serves as a good symbol for what the entire film is about. On the surface, it looks as if Goodfellas is just another shoot 'em up stereotypical Italian mobster movie, but there is actually a good amount of depth to the story. The movie revolves around the narrator, Henry Hill, who we first see as a young teenager in Brooklyn in 1955, wanting to be a part of something significant. We watch his transformation from innocent teenager to ruthless mob member over the course of the film. Due to his curiosity and his willingness to never rat on your friends and always keep your mouth shut, he quickly makes a name for himself within the mob ranks and is taken under the wings of Polly Cicero, Jimmy, the Gent, Conway, and Tommy DeVito. In many of Martin Scorsese's films, stories of saints and sinners are told. I think that it is the same case in Goodfellas, even though the majority of the people in the film are closer to sinners than saints. Every character in the film possesses qualities of both sinners and saints, but tend to become corrupt as the story progresses. These characters' thirst for power and a lavish lifestyle led them to do sinful things to get what they wanted. They did this by threatening. Any letter from that school to that kid's house comes directly here, you understand? Yeah. If another letter from that school goes to that kid's house, in the fucking oven, you're gonna go ahead first. Beating. And worse. One of the best traits of this film is the presence of emotion within the story. Not only do we have scenes where someone is getting beaten to a bloody pulp, we see brilliant displays of such emotions as fear, love, betrayal, happiness, etc. The film deals with a variety of emotions, but seems to center around betrayal and the thirst for power. The presence of betrayal is seen as a consistent theme throughout the story, but some key intensified moments are Karen's confrontation of Henry for cheating on her. Karen, please be careful. Baby, baby, don't, don't. But still, I couldn't hurt him. And the final courtroom scene in which Henry finally rats out his old mob buddies. Mr. Hill, do you also know a man by the name of Paul Cicero? Yes. Do you see him here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point him out for the members of the jury? Your Honor, let the record reflect that Mr. Hill has identified the defendant, Paul Cicero. The idea of obsession with power is best exemplified in the famous Coca Cabana scene in which Henry takes then-girlfriend, Karen, out on a date and make sure they get the VIP treatment. This includes sneaking in the back door, getting a private table brought out by hand to the front of the show, and praises from those around them. Karen then asks Henry, What do you do? I'm a construction person. You can tell that Henry is at the peak of his happiness and feeling of self-worth, as he answers her question with a grin and a lie. A concept that Scorsese tends to incorporate in the majority of his films is the idea of redemption. I would say that there is no example of a complete redemption within Goodfellas, although hints of redemption could be argued in some instances. With scenes such as the final rat out, in which Henry Hill testifies against his old peers, this is still an incomplete form of redemption because it is clear that Henry Hill is not a changed man at the end of the film when he delivers the line, I'm an average nobody. I get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. I wouldn't even say that this is a form of societal redemption, because although some of the mobsters were brought to justice at the end of the movie, there were still many of their actions that were left unaccounted for and without punishment. Ties could be made between Goodfellas and a past Scorsese project as well, Raging Bull. Now besides the fact that they both featured the legendary Robert De Niro, both films share a similar storyline. The general tale of both of these stories is a man with a thirst for power, money, fame, and success. Both start off having to work their way up to the top, and eventually achieve their goals and live the lavish lifestyle. However, the lives of the main actors in both of these films turn to tragedy 
as they both sink to rock bottom, trying to cope with the pressures of their supposed success. Both films feature the idea of the American dream that we all seem to strive for. These stories show the tragic events of these two individuals on their pursuit for happiness. If anything, maybe we learn from these stories that carrying on with our lives as a bunch of schnooks ain't so bad.